around. Assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum. It means that I witness there is the light, there is the energy, there is the barakah of peace upon you. That's what it means. Assalamu The peace, Allah's nur is upon you, is in you, within you. It's a big thing. Also, it has a cultural connotation. That in the desert or wherever, when you meet somebody, they say, I have not come with weapons in my hand or arms. I, I am coming to you. It's better. I am coming to you <laughs> with least disturbance. You see, without sound is even less disturbed. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Whatever you praise, you are praising an aspect, a quality, an attribute, or a name of Allah. Wake up to that and you'll wake up fully. Whatever you like. You want to have a good reputation? Allah is beyond any tarnish. You want to be loved? The entire cosmos is based on infinite levels and layers of love. You want knowledge? That entity which is the root, the source, the essence of it all is the emitter of all knowledges, outer, inner, physical, within the atom, beyond the cosmos. That's so. Whatever you praise, you praise Allah. Alhamd, the praise. I had been in every way truly in gratitude, first and foremost, to that original design. I am in utter gratitude to the maker of it all, the sustainer of it all. That light, that energy, that source, that essence that permeates it all. That is the ultimate intimacy. If you truly dissolve in that love and in that gratitude, then you are qualified to acknowledge whatever has coalesced as matter, as material, as bodies, as forms, and so on. Then you can deal with it. If you don't look at the duality and multiplicity through the lens of unity, then you will always remain confused, perplexed, and uncertain, and insecure, oscillating between fear and hope. For how long we want to oscillate between fear and hope? It's often been said that the two legs represent fear and hope. But we want to fly beyond the limitations of the horizons. So how long are you going to be on your feet? poor feet in really all these years, up and down. <laughs> I am in utter gratitude to that light of lights. And also, I am grati in total gratitude to all the shadows, which had been the real madrasa, the real teaching school. Outwardly, physically, biologically, in terms of wisdom and in terms of light. So I am in utter gratitude for all the shadows. And also I am in utter, utter gratitude to the realization that the shadows are seamlessly connected with the light from which they have emitted. So wherever you look is the manifestation of that truth. That's all what I know. The rest, many of you know more. Really. Whenever I hear there is something wrong with the electricity or this, I disappear because I don't know. <laughs> and somebody also tries to be wise, especially if they are Sufis or whatever, they say, Allah has done it. They become the agents of Allah. You see how it is. Very powerful. Allah has done it. They are coming with that you know, card. Ah, Mustafa, it's like that, isn't it? You know, whenever they want power, they come in with that. We are indeed very humorous creatures. And the best way is to tackle it is to sing, as this wonderful lady sings always. 
الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله you have to laugh at the ego you have to laugh at the shadow really and enjoy it because the ruh is beyond seriousness is beyond weight beyond anything that you can ever imagine so where is then the humor it is the nafs laugh at yourself initially laugh at your husband but not too loud in front of him and vice versa and then find that he and she are totally interchangeable exchangeable there's one there are two different facets you are a male or a female these are the clothes you have taken on you're cloaked in this form that's it and a time will come that you shed that cloak until you realize the same principle in you you're not emancipated you're still concerned about otherness he said that of course he said that yes you know for 20 years he's been wrong so 20 years you have suffered and also you're wise enough you know that if you change the other one is going to be maybe worse you had to get used to it all of this time the way he wants his tea the way he nags the way this and his moods his mood changed i think that's very important isn't that right you know you know you know before his meal especially during the month of ramadan you must avoid contact the last hour before breaking of the fast women are spared because they end up in the kitchen and the men pretend to be somewhere, you know, whatever. They're longing, if they are smokers, of course, longing for that puff and the muff and the duff. <laughs> laugh at it, really, you must laugh. And then be serious in your disappearance. And then you find the two oceans meet in you. Marajal Bahraini Yaltaqiyan Baynahuma Barzakhun La Yabriyan. That's it. And that's who you are. Sublime and ridiculous. A light beyond limits and the nafs that has come because of that light to show you the light so that darkness is also divine where is it that it's not divine what is it that is not sacred all of these words sacred gathering the sacred places these are all outer cultural indications so where is it what is it so wake up to that and then you put up with this occasional sleepwalking and the dreams don't respond to the nightmares which is your biography it's a nightmare it's a package of suffering <laughs> And they did this and they did that and they wronged me and everybody thinks they have been done unjust, unjustly. Why is that? Because the ruh is ever perfect. And the nafs or the self or the ego, whatever name you like to give it, all these number layers, we weren't sure whether it is six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve layers of the nafs. You know, there are books written on these things. Yeah, even a book, somebody called it journey of the self there is no self there is no journey please if you have the book use it as a bonfire you know or something <laughs> the journey of the self an illusion of illusions of illusion there's no self it's only a tiny passing shadow it's only you recognize it I have journeyed you know I've come a long way isn't that right Sheikh Sahab you know you can look at me am I not but everybody wants acknowledgement because the ruh is acknowledged by its original essential creative principle which is in it so the nafs wants the same the nafs was exactly it's an illusion there is a book called 101 helpful illusions it's all that it's an illusion laugh at your illusion and the conclusion was there from before the beginning the conclusion is none other than one that is it I am delighted and truly in utter gratitude for having shared at this time and age a most wonderful, joyful, celebratory gathering. As you know, there are countless fears, possibilities of accidents, ups and downs in this world. And here we have had few days in between there were true inner heartfelt intimacies 
and my dearest, dearest visitors, we have these wonderful, great, enlightened beings, whether it is Sheikh Kabir, Sheikh Hussam, Sheikh Saadi, and Sheikh Amanullah, these wonderful beings, and so many others. Thank you for coming today. I know you had to make it by coming by air. You are most generous. All of these people, it's not a small thing nowadays, you know, really, to have these wonderful beings. And there were a number of cherries on the pie that because I'm supposed to be here or belonging or something, I don't know what belonging means. Everybody else pays the bill. I don't know what it is, so I don't. But there are some cherries on the pie that I'm reserving for later, including some of the songs, including the talk of Dr. Adnan. I'm going to relish these so that after you've gone, I will enjoy this, you know, basking in shows the discourses of unity, of connectivity, connectedness. That is our job in this life. We have a job to do, to read, iqra, iqra, read that connectedness, infinite levels of it, layers of it. So enjoy it. Take the nectar of this gathering with you. And whenever you are a bit upset, depressed, because this will happen. And a wise religious person will tell you, God is testing you. It is God's way, God's will. I don't know what those means, but anyway, listen and move away. You know, like the advice given to Isabel yesterday. Listen to these wise, say thank you very much and go away. What do you mean God is testing you? You fell into the trap by your own stupidity. God is testing you. You elevated it now. It was absent-mindedness. It was whatever. You fell into it. And suddenly said, God is testing you. They have now given it an elevated label. We are very funny creatures. No wonder the angels were very seriously disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> really, we must laugh at it and see it again. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Immediately look at yourself in your higher mirror, instantly, as you're saying it. Why are you saying it? Do you have a, an agenda? Do you have a purpose? What sort of ambition is it? What is it you want? If what you want is to be without any wants in a correct way, not artificially, because you have listened to some Sufi something. If it is genuinely to have no desires, it will come to you. They will all leave you, incidentally. You know, even your family will run away. They say, you can't get him. He is not subject to blackmail. So, so you're relieved. She says, yeah, well, be desireless and you find you will be often left to yourself. When you are left to yourself, go to your soul and live at that. The entire creation is embedded in that. But it is easy to say and it is easier to do. It is easier to do. The nafs tells you, no, that's a very difficult law, you know, it's very, very hard, very harsh on me. The nafs wants to assert itself. Don't listen to that. It's easier doing than saying. Just do it, die into it. Stop it. It's instantaneous. And you'll be relieved. So I am very happy to be here. And it is all Majid is doing who is sitting there. But the thing is that earlier on she used to sit under that tree down there. And the angels heard and we heard and we knew that there would be some hospitality, nice rugs, nice food, nice beads. So we have come. Please don't change your mind. It is a delightful occasion to have people from different backgrounds. No two of you are of the same place of the same culture or the same religion or the same really. It's so wonderful that this apparent diversity is a proof of eternal, ever-present unity. This is the proof of it. This is the proof of Allah. 
really. So we are simply enacting on this earth an aspect that is original and heavenly. And we are the beneficiaries of it. The giver is one, and the takers are countless. Share the best of what you have in your heart with whoever. And don't go back and forth into your biography, and it was this and it was that, and everybody's wheeling this thing, and the day I did that, and the day I had, and also epiphanies, and you don't know that day I heard the voice of God, or there was a direct hand of God that took me out of being trampled on in Mecca. Yeah, absolutely. Huh? It's like that. Don't do that. It's boring. There is none other than utter, direct, absolute. The rest are different versions of illusions. There's only one conclusion. Kan Allahu walam yakun shay'un ma'ah. Why, if you had told me this, I wouldn't have said any of this. <laughs> it is only that. Don't build up all of this. It becomes a, a lecturing career and a Sufi career. This is, it's better than other careers, but it still is a career. Watch out. Allah's rahmah and adl and mercy and generosity is perfect and utter. Every one of us have the same spark. Not a prophet has more, not a great wali has more, no one has. There is no more. When it comes to the original spark, it is in every heart. Wake up to that. It is a huge treasure, huge responsibility. Wake up to that. And the day-to-day -day ups and downs which will continue will be treated in the relative appropriate way. Can you do anything about it? You have to relieve agony. You have to relieve suffering if you can. But it becomes often a habit and we become habituated to victimhood. You know? Especially of the East. Especially of the countries that are going through their turmoil. You don't know what we have been through. We don't know. And they all talk about unity, unity, unity. You know, Libya is splitting into two to begin with, and then two will be twenties. So it is the human nature to see otherness. And it is the soul's truth and reality to see nothing other than its originator, unless to be wrong. Simple. You don't need 50 years of studies, but few ayahs of Quran, few clear impacts of that ultimate unveiling will help. So, whenever you say, "Oh, Alhamdulillah, our tariqah has more numbers," remember, "Alhaqum takatur If I am with Sheikh Hassan and if we hear any of these nice Sufi wisdoms, we'll immediately use one word: "Alhaqum." See that. It's a whole surah. They say, our numbers is more. Our sheikh is a great qutub. He's a greater than all the qutubs. All the qutubs have come to him in his dream. And they all bowed and died at his feet. <laughs> Boring stuff. This is the end of an era which served great purpose. When Islam was derailed by dynastic Muslims, there had to be always the nur is carried by some vehicles. They were great beings, great tariqas, great people. But I gave you, give you the news that with the universal situation we are in, with the global scene, we have to acknowledge the beauties of these traditions and enjoy whatever is left of it, but without trying to resurrect them or resuscitate them at a time that they will be more and more counterproductive. There was a story of some people who visited, I think it was you, Sheikh Tabir, who said it, about in the presence of the divine, and one of the sheikhs was not, was not there until they told him the Viktashi that 
he was, he had lifted the veil, was it? Yeah. Now, it happened to me in Karachi. Wajahat said it. I uh, said, Wajahat, welcome, Wajahat, welcome, Wajahat. I don't know what we did without you before. And Amir Khosrow was a brilliant Wajahat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you more than we love Amir Khosrow. Because, that, really, because you bring it to life. Now, this story was in Karachi. And I think Abbas was there with me. For some reason, my, the people there whom I know, they thought I am a Sufi collector of sheikhs or something. There was this very old man, and usually because of the civil servants there feel very guilty, every now and then whenever there is an old sheikh visiting nearby, they give a party for him. And there was this old fellow visiting uh, Islamabad, and this house of a big director general, he was not a minister like you, Mustafa, but he was, he was more permanently plugged in. You may come and go, but the other <laughs> bureaucrat, you know, you know who your nemesis are here. <laughs> there was this old sheikh, and they, it was Iqbal, Dr. Iqbal, who said, you must come and visit me. I said, I said, occasionally I become compliant, and I say, all right, take me. And often I regret it. So I went there, and there was people hanging. You know these old houses in, in Islamabad? They have a huge staircase. You know, they, people were hanging on the staircase. Three, four, five hundred people. We couldn't get the car anywhere near the house. So they walked me. And somebody introduced me, and he said, from which tariqa is he in, of course, in Urdu? So they said, he's a Shazili. Now, I never talk about Sufis. I never talk about tariqa. Really, I've no. So they've gone back into a biographical thing, whatever, they dug it. And they, he's a Shadili. I said, oh, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. And everybody from the staircase began dripping down. <laughs> and I, of course, switched off. I have that knack. So switched off. I don't know where I was for a few minutes. And then he suddenly started talking about last time he was with Rasulullah in the unseen, there were Sheikh Rifai, there were Sheikh Chisti, there were this and there were that. And he named about nine or different tariqas. And said, but Sheikh Abul Hassan al Shadili, Sayyid Abul Hassan, was not there. <laughs> Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Everybody said Subhan. So, of course, I kept in my disappearing act. But they all looked at me. They wanted a response, so there was this a play now took place. A Sufi Leela. So they all looked at me and there was a silence. So I had to say something. I said, well, I think Sayyid Abu Hassan al-Shadili had been in the Divine Presence. He was not anymore with the Prophet. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. <laughs> I tell you, I am frightened of being in these circles with this up, one-upmanship. But those days are over, I tell you. And you will regret that they have gone in time. You know, really. So relish it even. Even though it has this one-upmanship, he is the greatest of the Qutubs of the Aqtar. What is all this boring stuff? Time for that is gone. People, every individual, every people, every nation, every religion, People who are intelligent enough, they want to have the inner experience, number one, of the self-nothingness, and number two, of the eternal presence of light, which emits everythingness. This is what it is. It doesn't mean I do not pay respect to all what went on, all of the wonderful traditions, I enjoy it, I love it, but don't fall into that cultural entrapment. I have come across hundreds of people who, not like Isabel, just changed religion twice. Every two, three years they discover a new sheikh, a new light of lights, and why is that? We want to believe. We want to have manifested hope, and they change. This is a big 
clear manifestation of confusion. The Prophet ﷺ just needed to be in the cave. So why can't you enter into your nothingness? Empty all out. And you know there is la ilaha illallah. Acknowledge teachers. You need people to help you to refine your character. You need to discover all the different treacherous levels of the self and the nafs. But don't dwell upon it. Then it becomes your crutch. I am now emerging from my nafs al-ammara. Do you know I am now beginning to have the nafs al-mutma'inna? Use these as little maps. I asked once, long time ago in America, why hadn't I heard the, the word of tariqa? I had not heard it really until I came to these Sufis. He said, what does tariqa mean in Arabic? What's the root of it? Turuq, tariq, tariq. It means a path, a way. He said, what, when you are truly in the city, in the sanctum, do you talk about the path? So, otherwise it's all one-upmanship, comparing this and that. Our oh, this sheikh is great. The true sheikhs, if there are any of them around, they never talk about who is higher, who is lower, who is this. Is they, never, they see the nur of Allah everywhere because they look through the lens of the eternal light. Imam Ali salam says, I don't see anything until I see the nur of Allah preceding it. And I see the nur of Allah emitting from it. And I see the nur of Allah also after what manifested has gone. It's only that. If you do not keep that ultimate qibla in your mind and heart, you will enter into self-deception. This sheikh is greater, this sheikh is well. I've seen so much mischief around the few remaining sheikhs who follow the older, if you like, established traditions. Again, don't mistake that these traditions have served a great purpose. Why aren't they able to help now? Because take any of the olden cities in the East until a hundred years ago. Take any of the great Moroccan cities. Take Fez, which has been so much in celebration. There were three Zawiyas, often two or three Zawiyas in Fez, and two to three or four hundred mosques. And these Zawiyas were under uh, the light of a living, enlightened sheikh. And the mosques, whoever has done their deen, had the basics, they know in or out of the boundaries of Sharia, of the Quran, then they are ripe for being in the Zawiyah, singing away their heart and having the wonderful reference of a great enlightened sheikh. And they could not change in between. They could not go because everybody knew everybody. The same thing in villages and in towns. You couldn't pick and choose. You didn't like this because of the flavor or whatever, because they poured the uh, mint tea with a higher thing or the lower or there were more agaba tea. That's it. You, if you don't stick to the one, you will never ever realize the presence of the one. But nowadays it's impossible. You give bay'ah to the sheikh, it's false. Because you can't enforce any of it. A hundred years ago in a village, what the sheikh said was law. Because there was no law. Outside there were highwaymen. Nowadays, of course, there are still plenty of them everywhere. You know. but, but <laughs> so, you can't do it anymore. But the teaching need to continue. Personal responsibility need to be increased. A hundred years ago, the belief and the faith in the sheikh because again, the belief and the faith in the father or in the village elder. You disobey him, you'll die. You know, there was no portable refrigerator. You go out of the village and you die. So fear, fear, fear. Not any law, not anymore. The teachings must be continued. But the expectations of what we consider to be courtesy, adab, correctness, which were wonderful and made the path easy, no longer workable. In the Chisti tradition, they had the most wonderful formula of Fanaf al-Sheikh. 
So they love the Sheikh to such an extent, they love the light in the Sheikh which is also in their heart to such an extent that there is that resonance. But now tell anybody die in your Sheikh, it is against human rights. <laughs> it, times have changed but the suffering is the same, the path in a way is the same, but the cultural, if you like, setup is no longer that valid. It simply becomes folkloric. Nothing wrong also with folklore. Also, but, but don't mix it up. You know. So this is what I know and what I know in absolute clarity is the way of the future. Every one of you must discover the light of the truth, the light of the Prophet, وسلم, the light of your Sheikh in your heart and move on. And don't hang anything on a person. There is no such thing as a person. A person comes and a person goes, and a person is liable for mistakes. Don't forget that. That is Allah's way also. But take whatever useful, relevant teaching and move on. And it's perfectly all right to take wisdom from wherever it comes. But for a novice, a starter, like a child. If a child has a different mother every week or every month, it will grow very confused. But if a 40-year-old also has the same boss or one and only boss, day and night, they'll be very frustrated. So as a child on the spiritual path, take one person who is of use to you and don't look around. But by the time you are grown up more spiritually, then be a bee and go to other flowers and take from them what is good. We're very fortunate here in having most of you mature, sufficiently discriminating. You don't mix up things, otherwise you will be very confused. One sheikh tells you this is all wrong, then the other tells you, no, don't, don't get married. Now what are you going to do? Of course the nafs will prevail. So because you wanted to marry, so you listen to the sheikh who told you you must get married. And I guarantee you three or four years will not pass before you blame that shit. Not blaming your nafs. No, I tell you, I've had examples of it here. Every day. Now. It's the same. Watch out. Don't go shopping if you are a novice. Doesn't matter. Just stick to what you know. Stick to the mother. Until such time you grow, then the mother hopefully kicks you out. You know, weans you. Really, this is the wisdom of real enlightened people say all right now go and travel the world the wonderful news also in our world is that there are people who are disseminating the knowledge the inner side of it the outer part of it and they are traveling and I am in every way truly honored by this phenomenon and here as I said earlier look at these wonderful people who, who are here this is a proof of the age we are in. You are the best representatives of humanity if you go as you do with the intention to share that which is not yours and cross-pollinate. La sharqiyatin wa la gharbiya. Honor your tariqa. Honor your sheikh. But more than all, truly utterly with your tongue with your mind with your heart acknowledge the light of lights and let people do whatever they can within their limitations you know. again I thank Allah Azawajal for his infinite Rahmah I thank the wonderful clarity of what we have had from all the great prophets and the completion and the ease of that completion that came to us as Muslims. It's a big responsibility upon us to live as such. Otherwise, we give Islam and the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad, if you like, bad and totally unacceptable, if you like, samples, examples, or manifestations. So always follow what the Prophet did, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Astaghfirullah. Take cover in Allah's rahmah and mercy from our mistakes, from our mishaps, from our exaggerations, from our thoughtlessness, from our heartlessness, from our lack of reference to the 
nur of the ruh inside us. So, thirst continues in this world. Need of human beings to take away thirst, their own waham, their own illusion, their own delusions. Thirst empty you out. فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ It's conditional ayah. And when you are empty, then you can stand up and begin your true attempt to connect with that which has ever been connected. So it is, this, this is the clear, pure way of transformation. All of our worship are transformative acts. And the original path, as it was during the time of the Prophet, as it had been throughout the last 1400 years, but in small samples, here, there, everywhere. For 50 years, you had many, many, many cities, 50, 100 years, all over. Whether it's in Hadramaut, or in what is now Somalia, or in West Africa, suddenly you find a being and people, and there was a huge effulgence. And the season changes, and it's gone. You know, now we'll go and look for the manuscripts, you see, which is also all right. Seasons will continue to change. We are coming to a wonderful time. The global scene, people can read, people can reflect, people can increase their own personal responsibility. Wonderful to be alive now. Can I ask Dr. Boris to come here? He wants to take shower. if you don't mind. You and Sheikh Hassan do it. I don't know how you want to. He stands there and comes here. You decide. Yes, right here is the. Allah, Allah. Allahumma salli. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik wa anna'im ala Sayyidina Muhammad. This fine gentleman would like to take the shahada. As usual, we say he doesn't know what he's letting himself for. No, I threatened him. Sorry? I threatened him. You threatened him, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what I say that what you are going to do, you are going to do two things at the same time. One is to imprison yourself, and second is to liberate yourself. One is when Allah says, فَإِنَّمَا تُوَلُّوا فَثَمَّ وَجْهُ اللَّهِ Wherever you go is the face of Allah. So this is an imprisonment, because wherever you go, you can never escape. But at the same time, it's a liberation because you know wherever you go is Allah with you. Allah is your protector. Allah is your companion in every way. So if you are still willing to take shahada, we will be delighted to help you to join our community, the small community here and the bigger community of Muslims. And I pray to Allah for you to be a, an example for them. You are a doctor. And you can treat people with a special eye that each one comes to you is a creature, is a creation, is a face, is a manifestation of Allah. So you do your best to help him. I'm or help him. I'm Alhamdulillah. Allah. Alhamdulillah. Allah. You take his hand. But I say, and you repeat after me three times. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ashhadu. أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا رسول الله I'll repeat again أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا رسول الله I repeat the third time 
أشهد أشهد أن أن لا إله لا إله إلا الله إلا الله وأشهد وأشهد أن أن محمدا محمدا رسول الله رسول الله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ما الله بلس يو أن تتكت يو أن إكريس يور نوليج أن هم أن أبري وين ثانك يو This is Dr. Nabil Boris. Welcome him. Thank you. Welcome him in every way. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. We love you. We trust you. Allah.
night. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.